Good day, grade sevens. Welcome to Tuma Mina Teaching. You are tuned into your first EMS lesson or term four. By now, you already know that in this series of lessons, we only focus on the financial literacy part of EMS. My name is Buitumelo Dial, and this is my contribution to Tuma Mina Teaching. In Term 4, we will only have two lessons that focus on financial literacy. And in both these lessons, we will be discussing the concept of savings. In today's lesson, we will have a look at personal savings, business savings. We'll also look at why it is important to save and the different methods of savings. Are you ready? Let's get to it. Right, so who of you grade sevens have a piggy bank that looks something like this at home? A piggy bank was probably your first encounter with the concept of saving money. If you've never had a piggy bank, don't stress. We will learn all about savings in these two lessons. So let's start at the beginning. What does it mean to save? To save means to put money away each month in case of emergencies so that you would be able to pay for those emergencies. People also sometimes save so that they can buy something special or even go on a holiday. It is also important to save money for your retirement one day. I'm sure there are a lot of you who are currently saving for something special or perhaps you've saved for something in the past. Let's pause this video and discuss this in class. Raise your hand and tell your teacher all about it. Moving right along, let's take a look at adulthood and how your parents and other adults are supposed to save their money. Your parents receive a salary or wage each month. This is called their income. Unfortunately, your parents also have a lot of expenses each month. When the expenses are deducted from their income and there is money left, your parents can put this away. This is then called personal savings. Your parents can put the money they saved into a savings account which earns interest and therefore increases their savings. So how can you as a grade 7 learner learn how to save money? Well, let's take a look at a practical example. Let's meet Unati. Unati works at her Gogos puzzle shop over weekends. Ugogo gives her 100 rand her weekend. She uses 50 rand of the money for her weekly taxi fare so that she can get to and from school during the week. She also uses 20 rand per week for cell phone data so that she can chat with her friends and then lastly she uses 10 rand to buy sweets at the school's tuck shop. This all adds up to 80 rand a week which means she has 20 rand left each week. She can take this 20 rand and put it into her piggy bank each week. This is called savings. If perhaps Unati decides to buy fewer sweets at the tuck shop, Unati can save more money. It is important to save more money and not spend too much money on unnecessary things. To save properly is a discipline and a skill that can be learned earlier on in life. So... Why not start today? In summary, we can conclude that a person's personal savings is the money that is left after they've deducted all their expenses from the income that they had. Now that we know what savings are, why do you think people save? Why do you think it is important to save? Well, stop this video and quickly discuss this in class. Oh, 
Oh, time is up. I know time flies when you're having fun, right? Oh, well, could you come up with some reasons as to why people save and why it is important to save? Let's take a look. The first reason why people save is that they want to buy expensive things. Suppose you really want a new cell phone, but you don't have enough money to buy one. You then decide to get a job on the weekends. Instead of spending the money that you make at work on sweets, clothes and data, you can instead put this money away. Save that money and in a few months use that money to buy yourself a new mobile cell phone. So what do savings do? Savings make it possible for us to buy the things that we really want without going into debt. Many of us don't always have the patience to save and we just want something immediately, which sometimes leads to you buying the product on credit because you can then receive it immediately. The problem with this is that you then pay interest on that debt. That is why it is always a good idea to have some endurance and to save until you can afford to buy that one thing that you want. The second reason why people save is for emergencies. Suppose you barely make ends meet every month. What are you going to do if you have a medical emergency or if your car breaks down and you don't have money to fix it? The third reason why people save is for their children. Many people save their money so that one day they can leave something for their children. Lastly, it is very important to save for one's retirement one day. Most people retire at the age of 65 in South Africa, but sometimes because they haven't saved enough money, they can't retire on time. And they then have to continue working or they become dependent on others to look after them. Great sevens, to be quite honest, there are a lot more reasons why people save money, but we've just had a look at the most obvious ones. Let's move on. Up until now, we've had a look at personal savings. We're now going to move on to business savings. The same principles apply to businesses. It is very important that businesses save money and not incur unnecessary monthly expenses. Businesses must put money aside for emergencies as well as for expansions such as the purchase of new work vehicles or additions to their offices or shops. Grade sevens, as you may know, there are many different methods of savings. The most common one being saving through the bank. Stay tuned for that in our next lesson. For this lesson, we will focus on the community saving schemes. The most common one being the stock fell. So grade sevens, who among you know what a stock fell is? Quickly discuss this. A stock fell is an alternative traditional method of saving. A stock fell is when a group of people, usually 12 people, each have to pay a fixed amount of money on a regular basis, usually every single month, into a central fund. They then take turns to receive the money paid in by all the members. Let's take a more practical look at a stock file. Suppose you and 11 of your friends decide to start a stock file. You decide that each member must put in 10 rand every month. This means the entire team's contribution is 120 rand every month. Every single month, one member of the stock file receives 120 for a specific month. According to the National Stock File Association of South Africa, there were more than 11.4 million people in South Africa who belonged to a stock file in 2022. A lot of banks have also now started to accept a stock file as a savings method. Members of a stock file can now open a so-called club account. It is a joint account where members pay the fee for the stock file monthly and the account also draws interest. So members now get more money. Doing a stock file using a bank is of course much safer 
since one member of the stock fell cannot simply steal the money. Let's move on to the second method of savings. This alternative traditional method of saving is called grocery clubs. Grocery clubs are usually established during the year. Each member gives an amount of money and at the end of the year, they buy products in bulk from wholesalers. And each member then receives a hamper at the end of the year, usually just before Christmas. Grade sevens, why do you think the products are purchased in bulk? This is because buying in bulk is almost always cheaper. Let's have a look at an example. Let's say you buy one can of baked beans at 20 Rand. If you buy 20 cans of baked beans, you will most probably pay 300 Rand for the 20 cans. If you then do the calculations, you will find that those 20 cans will only cost 15 Rand per can. So you will be actually saving 5 Rand per can if you buy in bulk. Let's now take a look at the last method of saving funeral societies. Funerals can be very expensive and whether you like it or not, each one of us unfortunately is going to die one day and therefore needs to make preparations so that someone else doesn't have to pay the costs. The purpose of these associations is that members contribute money to the association monthly in the event of someone's death in the family. <sighs> Can you believe it already? We've reached the end of our lesson. In the next lesson, we'll be looking at banks and their different methods of saving. See you next time.